Welcome to Bo's Workshop. Today we're building a Railbird Poland skiff. The Railbird XL, I made a couple modifications, made the sides of the hull a little bit taller, widened the transom by about 25%, widened frame number one by about 15% to get a little bit more buoyancy in, in the rear end uh, for when I want to use a trolling motor. Now I'll use the trolling motor mainly when I'm going on a serious fishing trip. Uh, I didn't want to lose the ease of paddling this is essentially something between a kayak and a stand-up paddleboard. It is really versatile. It's perfect for Citrus County, Florida. That's where I live. There's crystal clear springs, there's rivers, there's lakes. We can get out to the, to the Gulf and there's bays and shallow inlets. And so this is a pretty versatile little boat. I like it so much. This is the second one. It'll make this process a little bit easier to build. I've already done it before the strong backs already set up so this should get pretty quick the best way to set up these frames is to just draw it on a piece of plywood with the first railbird build that's what it ended up coming out that's the that's the layout with the railbird xl i raised the sides by 30 percent and you can see it's essentially the exact same design just the sides are a little bit taller have all the pieces pre-cut and all the frames are laid out. It's just a matter of running some screws in them, using some epoxy to glue it together. I have the longitudinal pieces, the keelson, the chine log, the shear clamp. They're pre-cut and ready to scarf those pieces together. When you scarf the joint, it needs to be at least eight times longer than the, than the width of the board. So everything's pre-cut and ready to go. By the time that the epoxy cures, I did some fast cure, I'll have the, sh the strong back set up. I don't have to, to create that again. I didn't take it apart. I just have to screw a couple pieces together and this will start forming a, a frame rather quickly. When you lay out the frames, take your time, make sure that you get all the angles right. You can use the, the black Sharpie lines to make sure that you have good angles. You can use the bottom of the plywood template, something to help keep you straight. When you set the screws, leave some room for the chine log here in the corner and you won't have to go back and take out screws. I like putting the screws in before I just start using epoxy or, or gluing it together so that things don't slip and move around. This way you can back the screws out and leave just the ends sticking out and you're able to get everything aligned properly and then the screws act like a clamp and when you're all said and done you have a very accurate frame the more accurate you are now the the easier it'll go together you won't have to make little modifications you won't need workarounds so taking your time now is actually the fast way of going about it if you rush and make a mistake well it's going to take a lot to fix it so before you start getting all the pieces together just make sure it's perfect and then move on. I'm about to start working on the keelson cutouts and the frame rails and the transom. It's, it's a tight fit. You want the keelson to fit snugly into the transom. And it comes in at an angle, so I do not cut it as big as I think that it should be. I, I rough cut it once I get it set up into the, the strong back. Then I come in with the chisel and I fine tune it. I want this to be as tight as possible. Uh, so that if I ever build a bigger boat, like an offshore boat, that where my life depends on it, I want to practice my woodworking skills now. And you can see that kill kill some cutout. There's details and instructions on exactly how big to make that in the blueprints. But and I use the the layout board to help center this up. It makes it faster, makes the measurements go quicker. Just lay the frame rails in there. I have the center point marked. I have a just a pencil line here at the edge for center. It really speeds that process up. This is the strong back for the rail bird. It's the platform that I'll build the boat from. I have an angle cut in the front for the stem. We have risers at different heights to give the boat its rocker. There's an angle for the transom in the back. With these blocks, it's kind of nice to set it up so that there's a little bit of a ledge to set your frame on. Set the frame. Get it centered up, measure everything. 
and you can just run a screw through the frame into the two by four behind it as a backing plate and that keeps it nice and square and strong and you can get all these level to each other you know based on your flooring and uh but when you put the screws in make sure you put them either straight in or or angled up a little bit uh, you don't want to have trouble getting it apart once you get everything laid out when i set the frames on a strong back i set them level to each other i take plenty of measurements you know, like the distance between the strong back and the, the tip of the frame i'll go from the center here to the to the frame i'll measure several different points and make sure that they're all as close to centered as possible with little deviations and tolerances you kind of have to average it all out but once again i try to work to be as precise as possible and uh, throw in a little clamp to keep it in place while you're doing the fine tuning before you put the screws in it seems pretty helpful once i set the screws i double check the measurements make sure everything is still centered up there's a little bit of flex that will come with this as you're putting on the chine logs and shear clamps and I think it all balances out and partially squares itself up. But once again, I like to take my time and get it set up good. I found when you're notching in chine logs, uh, you can lightly clamp it. You can see here, I have a little step off so I can take the pull saw and I can line that up with the chine log and you can use that as a as a guide to help cut just a nice perfect joint for where the frame rail meets the chine log. The saw, saw will flex to the same angle as the chine log and you can fine tune that joint uh, one thickness of the blade at a time. The end result of using that Japanese pull saw like that is you can get a nice flush cut, real precise, real tight joint. Uh, rough it up a little bit so there's room for the epoxy to lay in there and it'll be super solid. I have the chine log and the shear clamp installed. I'm working on fairing out these frames. On the stem, the angle is pretty sharp. Working on getting everything nice and symmetrical, get good tight joints the best I can. You have to take an edge off the, the chine log to get the bottom flat. My tools of choice are a random orbital sander, a plane, a rasp, and I have my good old trusty belt sander. That thing can get away from you, so it's really for rough work. And when you're fairing the bottom, you can use a straight edge and look for gaps and keep fine tuning it until everything's perfectly flat. That section's ready. I'm new to boat building, especially wood and fiberglass. I'm more of a metal guy. If I was building it out of aluminum, I'd know what to expect. So I wanted to test the material, the wood and fiberglass with uh, impact strikes and bending to see how it would hold up. Do you want to use quarter inch? Do you want to use three eighths on the, on the bottom of your boat? What kind of strength this is going to add? I thought this was a question that I had and I thought other people would have the same question. So. I made a full 20 minute video on Bo's workshop and I'm going to do a condensed version with a few clips so that you can have an understanding of what this material is capable of. All right, so we are set up for the strength test. Our hammer, we're going to do a pseudo scientific experiment where we can try, try to control some of these forces to get an apples to apples comparison. So let's see how this goes. It's about 12 inches. This is two layers of fiberglass on sandy ply. Strike at three feet. Now, although we're getting some heavy damage on the back side of the plywood, we haven't penetrated the fiberglass cloth at this point. Four feet. This is the 11 30 seconds plywood. 30 inches. So at 30 inches, we have a hole. At 26 inches, we had a bigger divot on the back side. Um, well, this test piece is the 11:30 seconds. It represents a larger build. There's actually a seam right in the middle of this piece. So this is 
Testing the strength of two layers of fiberglass on 11 30 seconds and it is testing the seams. Four and a half feet. Slight package of the plywood, didn't penetrate. About a six foot drop of a strike. All right, here's the first piece with the quarter inch sandy ply. You know, there's a difference in strength between this plywood, which is the same thickness as the sandy wood plywood. So see what it takes to break this one. All right, this is the stress test with two layers of fiberglass. 22. The wood will bend. It has to bend very significantly before it'll break. This is essentially testing the, the tensile properties of fiberglass. Well, it's clear to see that the fiberglass adds massive amounts of strength to that plywood. And with the Railbird XL, I end up using the Revolution ply with the two layers of six ounce fiberglass cloth. And I'm confident that that will be plenty strong enough. Setting up the sides, I clamped the plywood to the side of the frames. Clamp it down to multiple spots so that I can have good surface contact with the frame. I was able to do the first rail bird with three sheets of plywood. Once the plywood's clamped into place, you can trace it out with a Sharpie. And then it's just as simple as cutting it out. Cut on the outside of the Sharpie line to give a little play. You can always spare it up with the sander once we attach it to the boat. I'm going to epoxy the sides onto the frame now. And before you put the sides on, we end up making a plate to hold the stem. Make sure you take that off of there. If not, then you have to come under there with a sawzall and fight with it. So it's an important step. I forgot that in the first build. And uh, also take, a, take this opportunity to clean up any corners smooth out any epoxy they use to, to fill holes. It's easier to get into those corners now than once you get the sides on. I've decided to do the floor a little bit different than I did with the first rail bird. You can do the bottom in two pieces of plywood and you can use a butt joint uh, with a backing plate uh, to bind the seams. And that creates a little step off right in this center section. So if you did the two pieces uh, this piece of plywood here goes clear to the front. There'd be another piece that would come clear to the back. So instead of having a butt plate, I am doing a three piece uh, bottom where this piece will attach into the frame. This back piece will scoot up here. And then I'm gonna laminate a whole another layer of this five millimeter plywood with a layer of fiberglass in between. After doing the strength test, I decided that I'd like to have a 3 8 bottom on this particular boat. As hard as I'm gonna work it, it's gonna be in the saltwater lot, scraping on barnacles. I wanted a, a lot of strength, but I couldn't find a nice piece of 3 8 plywood. And this Revolution ply is so smooth and nice that I thought that by the time I took a piece of really rough plywood and go through the fairing process, that it would probably just be easier to make a custom laminate and that should be ultra strong and the floor will be smooth without any step offs and I think it'll really be attractive. I'm laminating the plywood together. I have three pieces on the bottom. There are two pieces going on top of this. So it'll be a fiberglass sandwich. When you start laying the fiberglass, you wet down the wood with the epoxy, stretch the fiberglass over it and then you come back in and soak it down a little bit more in the places that need it until it all turns clear. Well, the Railbird XL is coming along pretty well. I'm fairing the top edges. I'm cleaning up the interior. Here's a butt plate of how you join the plywood together on the sides. And I eliminated the need for that with the floor. I did a five piece floor, made a custom laminate, and then the floor will be nice and smooth with no butt plate in the middle of it. I've added some rails to help lash different pieces of gear into the boat. I'm trying to make it pretty modular so I can set it up for different purposes. 
I end up trying some pigment that you can put into the epoxy. I'm gonna cap off the back. Putting in a seat post, one of these pin style. So I can put a normal boat seat in it, or I have this cooler that I can sit on and I'll be able to bungee it down in different positions. I end up making a couple legs on it to straddle the, the keelson, so keep it from shifting around. And this is a wood veneered styrofoam cooler. And it's been quite the project, but I think it's gonna turn out pretty nice. And then I can either set that there or I can put it more forward. So depending on how I wanna use the boat, this one's gonna be really nice and flexible. Well, we've been going through the fairing process and sanding and sanding and sanding some more. And I'm going to use some epoxy primer to seal up everything. I have some white Rust-Oleum top side for the inside and the top. I have some Total Boat Wet Edge uh, polyurethane top side paint that I'm going to do at the bottom with. And, uh, have the the seat support finished. I have some cup holder holes cut in. It's ready for paint. I'm about to use epoxy primer and spray the hull. Put a couple coats on it. I'll do the best job I can do for an outside paint job. Inevitably, there's going to be a bug stuck in. I'm in the fairing process. I'd sprayed it with epoxy primer. And once I got it out of the dark cramped shop and got some paint on it, I noticed that there were some flaws that I really couldn't live with. I'm not looking for a perfect paint job. I don't have a paint booth. But I want to do the, the best roll and tip paint job that I can do under my circumstances. So I've come through, I've mixed up some epoxy and wood flour, made a fairing putty, and we've got it pretty smooth. Now this side, there was a big seam in the fiberglass. I started piecing some fiberglass together. With these smaller boats, it is possible to do a continuous sheet and maybe only have a seam up toward the rub rail but with the material that I had laying around, you can kind of see that arc. And that was the part that was bothering me the most. But now I think I have it pretty smooth and I have a chance to have a pretty decent paint job on it now. Well, the rail bird is pretty much complete. I'm about to put it in the water, give it its first test run here. So I made the sides a little bit taller on this rail bird to help I'm in busier areas with other bigger boats, maybe making a little wake, and I think that'll be a nice little addition. Uh, these little side, these little rails to help attach gear. I have a seat post plate with some cup holders there. That's about the sweet spot in the in the rail bird where if you're going to paddle or everything's balanced out pretty nice. I also put a cap on the bow and I've ran a wire just under that shear clamp to the back and I made a couple put in a couple power posts so I can clamp the trolling motor to that and under the rail those posts will be protected so I don't break them off overall I think it's going to be pretty nice When I made the first rail bird, I put a fixed seat in it. And someone had made a comment that it would be nice that it, if it would move, and I, I agree. So when I built this one, I've set it up so you can move seats around. You can do different setups, and I've made a wood veneered styrofoam cooler. I'm going to mount some rod holders to it. I haven't exactly figured out how I'm going to do it yet, but you can set this cooler in different areas. And it's strong enough to sit on, or you can have your normal boat seat. So this is one configuration. This setup, you can just sit on the cooler. Stand up and fish. The deck's nice and smooth. I did away with the need for the butt plate the way I put the floor together. You can just put the seat in it and sit down in it like it's a kayak and use a kayak paddle.
pretty stable. Don't have to worry about falling out of it. Well, to sum up the Railbird XL build, it really turned out exactly the way that I wanted it. Uh, I took a risk by making some design changes. I thought that there was a chance that I would ruin it. And my son does like the original Railbird a little bit better. It does paddle slightly easier. Now, with the design modifications, I added 25% of width on the transom, about 15% on frame number one. I raised the sides 30% across the entire boat and that makes it keep the same lines and the transoms flattened out a little bit to keep it under 16 feet now the extra buoyancy that i gained i'm able to stand up in the aft section of the boat i can have both kids in there uh, i end up mounting the, the trolling motor on it and putting the battery up front running wires from the, from stem to stern there and the balance is really good and it had this is a very versatile craft i can sit in it like a kayak i can stand up and paddle it i can put the trolling motor on it i can haul the family around i'm really happy with it this boat is specifically designed for me and that's the joy of building these boats you can make it you know, exactly the way you want it for your purposes and, and your purposes alone uh, but i hope you enjoyed this build hit the like and subscribe button i'm going to build a carolinian dory next if there's something that you would like to see or a different way that you would like me to do the video, please leave some comments and, and I'll take that into consideration. But thanks for watching.